it's early morning in Cape Town. At a sewage works in the suburb of Athlone, SPCA inspector Wayne Hector faces a sticky situation. Two dogs have somehow got themselves into the middle of a settling tank and can't get out again. Workers at the sewage plant called the SPCA as soon as they spotted the dogs. They think they must have been there all night. I hope it's, this, it's a simple explanation, like one dog on it and the other one following it. One dog, I don't know, trying to get away from the other one, and the other one just wants to go there. I don't know why they got separated so, so far apart, though. So this one here is, is a deep, you know? Um, Oscar goes to some you can sit. It's quite deep, yeah? Four meters deep. So um, the situation is they could be tired, dehydrated, they just want to drop. And if it happens that they drop, they, they, I don't know if they've got enough energy. I think they, they, they're just exhausted and they can't hold on for long. A deep control pole. It's OK, boy. It's precarious. Wayne has to hope the dog won't struggle. Otherwise, they could both end up in the filthy water. I don't want anybody. I say, move fast. Move fast. Move fast. I'll just hope the other one will go easy. That one is easy. Um, it's a bit unsafe, David. This one is very dangerous. Um, I'll have to find a way here yeah, without injuring myself or killing the dog. So what we can do, we can take the leather, put it down into the water, then we use the leather. No? Uh -uh. It's okay, it's okay, boy. Okay, what I need to do is I will go up there. Come on, boy. Come on. It's okay. It's okay, boy. Come. Before Wayne can get down the ladder, the dog begins to make his own move. Oh! He's scared and exhausted. Come, sir. That's it, that's it. Trek it, 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 wanted us to help him, so he was, he was he grew tired and he knew that we were there, we were going to help him. I thought he was maybe too weak to swim, but he had some, some energy left so he could swim. I'm pleased that we've got him now, though, so not, he didn't drown in the sewage water. It's a terrible place to die. <laughs> Both dogs will go back to the SPCA to recover from their ordeal. The morning has brought another surprise discovery a few miles away. A porcupine has turned up in a housing estate. Inspector Conchita Milburn and trainee inspector Liesel Pinar have been called in. They've been told the porcupine is bleeding from its nose. Someone phoned in this morning to say there's a porcupine underneath the bushes. This is a fairly built up residential area though, so you know, where it came from is hard to say, but it's under the bush there. Um, apparently, when it's approached, it doesn't really move, so we need to establish first if it's actually alive and that. It's going to be very awkward. Block the, can we block the holes at the bottom? Obviously, you can't handle the porcupine. Basically, you just got to be very aware of the, of the quills, and he could run off in any direction, so if, if he comes for you, and you can't reach out and touch him, so we basically just want to block off any holes and let him go straight into the box. 
Are you gonna go that side and, and rustle it up? Yeah. Because they they can change their size okay. by inflating okay. their calls or not. They can sneak between gaps because you think they're large and then they just downsize and sneak through. The porcupine doesn't seem to be able to move, either to go into the box or to run away. Hello. Why are you just lying there? It's not moving. Why his claws are coming up. Is it? Yeah. I think it's injured. Can you come closer? I'm like by its head. I think it's moving. Wait, wait. Are you ready? Yeah. Mm. Liesl, you're here. Liesl, I'm going to bring the box around. We can try. This looks like a magic box. You put something in it. This must be an injured porcupine, otherwise it would have moved by now. They usually, I won't say aggressive, but they'll usually move away and raise their calls and all of that. So this one's definitely injured and um, I saw some blood on the nose with some ants there, so possibly a car accident. Finally, Conchita coaxes the porcupine into the box. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. I'm gonna clear this and then close the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna take it back to the hospital, get the vets to have a look. Um, blood coming out of the nose, so possible MVA head injury. So we're gonna get him the ASAP. There are 93 societies for the prevention of cruelty to animals in South Africa. At the Cape of Good Hope SPCA's base in Cape Town, vet Miles Penfold has been told to expect the arrival of the injured porcupine. And where did you find him? Was he in the bush or in somebody's backyard? In our front yard, a few meters from the road. OK. The Is it quite a, quite a built-up area? Hmm. Yeah. What Lisa has described to me we just have a look at him, he's not looking exactly alert. You know, he's, he's, he's looking quite banged up. Normally, when you pick up these porcupines like this, they've taken a traumatic blow to the head, to the body, uh, especially if there's bleeding out of the nose. It could be a number of things, but it can be as, as much as having been knocked by the side of a car, been stoned by you know, people sort of walking by. Physically examining a wild animal covered in needle-sharp quills is not like looking at a domestic pet. I'm going to attempt to do a clinical on this guy, and we're going to move him into one of the horse boxes here. It allows me also to see if he's quite lively. Yes, he's running around, and to, rather than having him in a small cage. Mm, a little bit of trauma on this arm, but not much. We were able to have quite a good look at him when he was at the front of the cage, and we've got a small amount of bleeding on this left-hand eye here. But if you look at him, he's quite bright and alert. You can see he's a lot more active than when you picked him up. There's no signs of trauma on there, which is, which is really great. I suspect that when he was first picked up, probably be a little bit dehydrated, um, obviously scared, um, hungry and everything. And now that he's been able to cool down out of a, uh, a more stressful environment, uh, we'll, we'll just have to see how he responds. What I'll do is we'll get the broom, we'll flatten that, and then we'll crush him, and then we can quickly give him, give him some injections. Miles wants to give the porcupine some antibiotics to help it recover from the injuries it has sustained. Never knew the monster. But the porcupine seems to have found a new lease of life. I think clearly you can see from this, um, this is a, a healthy porcupine. I think given the, um, the degree of healthiness I don't think it's going to be necessary for us to risk life and limb giving him any injections on this here. We'll observe him for the night, see how he eats and drinks, but certainly watching him around here, that's kind of how they look in the wild. If you're looking at him here, I'd feed him for the night and I'd let him go tomorrow. The porcupine will be kept under close observation until the following morning, in case he suffers a relapse. Trainee Inspector Moyo Makar has been assigned an investigation into a serious issue. 
the SPCA has been told that some people in Hanover Park have been fighting their dogs for so-called sport. How are you, sir? Uh, from the SPCA. Um, we received a call that there were some dogs that were being used to fight one another. Okay. Yes, uh, from people who live behind you in the Wendy House. Okay, there is a black uh, pit bull. That's the call that we got. Can we have a word with them? Yeah. The caller said one of the dogs is injured, so Moyo's first priority is to find the dog and see if it needs medical treatment. Do you mind to tell us what actually happened? I cannot tell because I was working in this house. My yeah. The woman accident. says she heard a commotion, but didn't see then anything. The case is not about you, it's about the dog that has been used to fight. Because that's animal cruelty, if people are using dogs to fight one another. And that's what we're investigating. The information that we're getting is your son was also involved in the dog fight. I didn't see anything because... I never said you, I said your son. Do you mind to tell us what actually happened? Okay. Um, sorry ma'am, uh, if you don't want to cooperate with us, then we'll make this uh, a big issue. Moyo's hitting a wall of silence when a man says he knows where the black dog lives. It's your dog. Can you tell us what happened ma'am? I don't know what happened. Okay, uh, and where is your dog? He's not here. I took him away. Ma'am? I did took him away. Where did you take him to? To other people. Where? Why? No, we are, ma'am, this dog, this is a dog that is suffering. And we're there to combat animal cruelty. We need to know where the dog is. We need to know the truth. And we need to see the dog. Finally, the woman agrees to take Moyo to where the dog is. Now Moyo will be able to see whether it needs help. The dog has some injuries. It's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. I just noticed some marks on the on the underneath. Hello, hello. Um, the dog needs treatment. Uh, the lady was telling me that the children that allegedly were involved in the dog fighting, um, the mother is refusing to let them come out of the property, which is where we were at. So we'll have to take the dog to be seen by a vet. And then in the meantime, then we can also um, go back into the property and build up a case and get uh, down to the root of the, of the matter. It seems it was a group of boys who were fighting the dogs. The investigation will continue. But first, this dog will see an SPCA vet. Meanwhile, at the SPCA hospital in Grassy Park, vet George Birch has been examining the dogs rescued from the sewage works. Sadly, one of them was found to have canine distemper and has had to be euthanized. And there are obvious concerns about the one that fell into the filthy water. What we're looking for in the clinical is just to see um, general condition of the animal. Obviously, open wounds would be a concern um, because the animal was in contact with all that dirty water, you would um, worry about some, some form of infection. Infected and also um, getting the stuff down into the gut, which could obviously lead to quite a bad diarrhea. Um, on the clinical that was done, the, the feces seemed to be normal, and the animal's appetite is excellent. So, so I don't think that there's any real problems after that exposure to that uh, to that sewage. Biggest problem here probably I think is uh, just to get rid of some of these parasites and uh, this dog's condition can improve a little bit. Get the behavioral checkup to see what the animal is like with other animals and you know generally with people and if it's an okay candidate there then we can put it in the kennels of the adoption system. At least this dog looks like having a brighter future. The porcupine rescued after it was found shocked and bleeding, possibly after being hit by a car, has spent a peaceful night at the SPCA. This morning, he seems in remarkably good shape, and the vets have given trainee inspector Liesel Pienaar the go-ahead to release him. Dr. Penfall had a look at the porcupine, and it is showing <laughs> some signs of aggression, um, and it's looking you know, lively and active, so we're just gonna release it. 
don't think getting him into the box is going to be too much of a problem because he's going to see it as a safe option of hiding away. They can be a bit dangerous and um, the calls can, you know, it would hurt if it was lodged into you as well as an infection and things like that you need to be worried about. But they give you a warning ahead. I mean, the calls that we're raising, and usually they rattle their tails. That's warning enough for you to back off. Liesl plans to take the porcupine to a bird sanctuary, not too far from where he was found, but far enough to be safe from passing cars. This is a good release site because uh, it's, it's a fairly natural area as well as there's lots of bushy vegetation as you can see. Um, we've released here before, it's, it's a managed site um, and it's mostly your bird watchers that come in here and that, so it's not a lot of traffic going through here. We have a population of about three to four porcupines that we know of. There might be more because we regularly get tracks and quills and things like that, but our estimation is that there's about three to four in the area already. This was a good release, um, I would say a good recovery as well from yesterday. I mean, he was walking fine, running, bouncing, you know, there wasn't any signs of injury or walking, limping, you know, anything like that. So, he'll be all right. Good release. Trainee inspector Moya Makar has brought the Staffordshire Bull Terrier he found in Hanover Park back to the SPCA hospital. The dog has injuries from fighting. Vet Cookie Harris will assess the damage. This is something that we see very commonly when you have a staffy um, and in an area from Hanover Park, they're likely to be using the dog for fighting. You can see here in the neck area, underneath ventral neck, there's bruises around, you can see that. That's where the dog would really try to grab another dog, I think they know that they should go for a jugular when they attack. But what also is interesting is you can see there's edema, it's just massive swelling. It's, it's actually very interesting because this is one breed that's actually I found when they're well trained and um, they, they're well cared for, they're very lovely natured dogs. Uh, but I think sometimes people just take them for fighting because of their fierce bodies. They're just such obedient dogs. So it's very easy for people to use them for, for the wrong reasons. So the best thing to do with this dog is besides giving her anti-inflammatories to reduce the swelling, shaving that and cleaning it. Otherwise the dog is in a very good condition. She's a good natured dog, so you kind of want to think she's very well trained. The dog's safe here now. Meanwhile, Moyo will try to track down the people who encourage the dogs to fight for their own entertainment. They could face criminal charges for this. First, though, Moyo has been assigned to another job. He's accompanying Senior Inspector James Murphy on a drive 60 miles east of Cape Town. James has been told cows are being allowed to suffer on a farm near Malmesbury. It needs checking out and it's a useful part of Moyo's training. When they arrive, there's no one around, but James can see for himself some of the problems. You can see there's the water running down there, um, and the area around it is so muddy. I mean, this is where I got stuck. Looks like the guys try to dig away all the muddy bits, but I mean, that doesn't help. You're just digging a hole. When it rains again, it's just gonna be mud. I'm guessing all this water comes from the, from the trough itself that's possibly leaking somewhere. The cattle are getting stuck. You can see they're quite muddy up to their knees, some even further, and it's unacceptable. And it's going to have to get, get some sort of bulldozer in here to let the water run off and maybe even uh, possibly even get the cows out of the area and, 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 and let it dry and put them in an area where they can actually get to a, a, a trough without uh, sinking in. For some animals, it's too late. There's a dead calf here. It was stuck in the mud here. And I think the back legs are probably stuck in the mud. And that's why it just couldn't get there anywhere and it just died. And I mean, if you know, the farmer was, and his workers were, were 
vigilant, uh, they would have been able to realize that the, you know, there was a calf stuck here and, and helped it. This borders on cruelty. These two cows here seem to be struggling with uh, what appears to be foot rot, um, which is basically a, a direct indication of muddy conditions because I mean the, the mud just sits there and it stays damp and it causes an infection and things like that. So this is why we're so concerned about this area. The conditions are no better inside the cow sheds. Yeah. You can see they've got mud all the way up to their knees. The fencing is just very rudimentary and you know secured with wires and loose bits of wire hanging around. I mean, it's these bars and things, um, they're rusting. The calves are likely to stick their head through you and get uh, injured. I mean, the general hygiene of this place, it's, it might be a farm, but it doesn't have to look so disgusting, you know? This calf has got some big sort of lump on its throat here. Um, it's hanging. And I'm not sure what it is, but I think if we... I've taken some pictures and we can always just discuss it with our, our vet and see whether he knows what it might be. Whether it's life-threatening or just, just well, not a problem. Um, and then we can then contact the owner and say, look, he needs to make a plan with that, or he needs to get his vet out too. Calves are coming out of here, and this beam is like in the way, and they kick their leg against it. They could uh, hurt themselves seriously. They haven't bothered to repair it, they just leave it. Murphy's seen enough. He needs to speak to the owner urgently, and then he'll be back with the option of laying criminal charges if things don't improve quickly. Senior Inspector James Murphy is responding to a call about two small dogs living in the back of a pickup truck, or backy. When did the people keep the dogs in a, in a bucky here? Yeah? The dogs are locked in the bucky all day, and so we just need to find out what the story is, what their story, the you know, side of the story is. Let's go and see what's happening there. Hi there. Good day. Are you the owner of the dogs here? No, we received a concern about these dogs here. Why are they locked in the back here now? Why do they have to be in the back here and not running around the garden? The woman explains that she and her husband are staying temporarily with a friend here, but the friend won't allow their dogs in the house. The thing, the thing in fact, is the dogs, you know, the, the, the ones got the, got the eye problem, the ones got the skin problem. And they're all kind of confined in a bucky, which isn't really ideal. Uh, the hot weather's coming, and, and, and if the dogs are still sitting in here, I mean... And it can take a couple of minutes before those dogs are actually dead. And then in terms of the exercise... And oh, they I take get... Them to the we, park we every day, I walk them, I feed them, I give them water. Uh, they're, they're not, not, they're they're not they're neglected. Phew. Um, a bit of a difficult one. Uh, one of the dogs has a runny eye and some skin irritation, but James can see the dogs are well cared for. He's not happy with their living conditions, though. What I've asked is take the dogs to a vet for treatment of the eye problem and skin condition. Um, and then what I've written here is keeping the dogs in a vehicle in a, is unacceptable and a danger. Heat stroke to the dogs. Should anything happen to these dogs, you can be charged with cruelty. Well, I appreciate your understanding anyway. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's cool. Um, uh, so I just don't want anything to happen to these dogs in the bucky, and, and uh, it's not really safe for them, for them being here. Um, it's not ideal, it gets okay. hot. The man has promised to get the dogs out of the bucky immediately if the weather hots up. Dogs being in the bucky is, as I said, is, is very dangerous. Um, so I've just given him a little a warning in terms of that, and um, the one dog's got an injured injury to the eye, it's like an infection, it's all running and the eyes swollen and that sort of thing. At, at this stage the dogs aren't in any danger, it is cool at the moment um, and as far as things go we are looking at cooler weather uh, through to the weekend so he's aware that that's a dangerous situation and he needs to make a plan. You know, they, they're trying their best, I mean the dogs have got some water there, they've got a bowl of food there, 
um, blankets and that sort of thing. So they've tried to make it as best as possible under the circumstances, uh, you know. So you've got to kind of give them a little bit of leeway and, and, and just let them know what they, where, they, where they stand. James will be making regular checks to make sure the dogs are OK. Inspector Wayne Hector is in the centre of Cape Town. He's received a call about a young dog in distress. Just received a case about uh, this one puppy is badly burned. Might have happened over the weekend. Um, belongs to vagrants, so we had to go check and see if the dog is getting veterinary treatment. Um, let's check if they, they, they not, they're not denying any veterinary treatment or treatment. The dog belongs to this homeless woman. She says she doesn't know how it got the injury, but she plans to take it to a vet. Wayne's not convinced she means it. It's a burn. 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 She says she's going to take him for, for treatment at the mobile. Stop. Wayne doesn't want to take any chances. So he spells out the woman's choices. It seems like it was burnt or it's, it's a minor, it's, the skin wasn't torn or something, but uh, there is it's a definite injury here. And I, I, we have to check with the vet to see if it's, um, if it's got an infection. Now the dog will get to see a vet immediately at the SPCA hospital. The seas around Cape Town are full of life. Thousands of Cape fur seals swim in these waters. Once in a while, one of them's bound to get into a spot of bother. And that's where wildlife inspector Kira Joshua comes in. We got a call about a seal that's in somebody's backyard. Um, that's a call that we got from Marine and Coastal. So we're just coming out here to check to see that he's through. It's kind of strange to find a seal in a backyard. We didn't get any info about the, the condition after the seal. The, the caller um, wasn't too keen on going quite close to the seal, um, which is kind of good because you don't want people to get bitten. We don't know if it is going to be quite active in that. But it's a good thing that we are out here. I mean, the seal wouldn't be able to get back to the sea by itself. Hey, guy. The homeowner was quite right to be wary of the seal's teeth. Catching it requires an expert technique, both to avoid injury and to minimize the stress caused to the wild animal. There's no place that you can actually get out of here. Wait, wait. The seal showed no sign of injury or illness. It seems he just got lost. We saw him from the window, he's just lying there. And we came and looked at him and he started running up and down. And then I phoned for you guys. Okay, brilliant. And I mean, it was not, it's not quite, you don't actually see a lot of seals on this not, side. Not, not in the problem. No. no. <laughs> so we'll just take it back now. Thank you. See. Lovely. Thanks. Well, what I did over there, um, the thing is, I mean, he's quite active. It's not like the normal six seals, you just go up to it and then put the blanket to down. Um, normal with, with any wildlife, you just close the eyes, calms them down, it allows you to get a, a good hold. It 
a short drive to the bay and back where the seal belongs. It's a, it's a Cape Fur seal and he's a juvenile, he's probably last year's pup. But you find a lot of these pups when they're about this age, they are a bit thin because they've just weaned off from their mothers. So they're now trying to fend for themselves, basically. There's a, a colony over here on this side. We find a lot of these Cape Fur seals on our, on our shores. So it's quite a common seal here. But it's just that on that side where he was, you've never been able to get back to the sea, really, because it's all fenced off over there. Yeah, but he seems to be quite happy. <laughs> It's a mystery how the seal got into the fenced off area, but hopefully he won't be making the same mistake again. Back at the hospital, Inspector Wayne Hector has dropped off the dog with a suspected burn for a full examination by vet Cookie Harris. The habitus of this dog is very nervous dog. I think you can see he's got just slight trembling if you look at him. Just looking at his eyes, there's a, a, a discharge on his um, right eye. And I'll just go in and check. Um, his mucous membranes are very congested, very, very red. So I suspect that this is just a conjunctivitis confined to this one eye as compared to if there's two of them. He's also got very good teeth and he's got all his teeth. I would suspect he's, he's about the age of two. Okay, I think this is slippery. And then he's got this wound which looks more like an abrasion wound. I know it suggests a burn, but you find this is very typical of um, a motor vehicle um, wounds where the wheel of the car just goes over the dog but the dog manages to run away in time but it's healed very well so basically what one needs to do from here on is just treat him for the conjunctivitis and once that is sorted he, he should be fine the early signs are he'll make a good pet he's actually very easy to handle he doesn't uh, growl or anything to show any aggressiveness so he'll be a nice dog to rehome really Now Wayne's been asked to assist trainee inspector Moya McCarr in his investigation into dog fighting in Hanover Park. Moya has been patiently gathering evidence and thinks he's close to finding the young men who fought the dogs. He's been given two names. Hello. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, from the SPCA. Uh, could you see? And. Let's stay here. Okay. The other side. Okay. The boss of the other dog mm -hmm. wants to fight with the dog. Mm -hmm. So they challenge one another the dogs. Mm -hmm. If people try to organize the dog fights and they gain something out of it with pleasure or money, it is prosecutable. They can go to jail. Dog fighting. If you are there also as a spectator, yeah. you are yeah, guilty. So. If he is innocent, he's going to tell us exactly what actually happened. Bye. Hello. She's given us the name of the one of the the ringleaders, if I'm to put it that way. Can I have your own take? Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. Is this the film crew? No, no. We are going to make a clip there. Or they, 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 Finally, this young man admits he was at the fight. The last time when you went to Rodin to run away, Mos, because I was scared you're going to take me, and so I didn't come in. So you were involved with the dog fighting? Yeah, I was involved. Because we're also... Okay, he just, he just told me, no, no, he was, he was, he was the guy that fought I with was the, the... one. He was fighting he with the dog. So you know that it's prosecutable and you can get, yes. get a fine or get a sentence for it. Um, you, must, you must then now make an affidavit, a statement. You must be signed by the police officer, commissioner of out, um, stand by the police station and say you were involved. And you do realize that what, what you've done is wrong. Because the dog fighting is, just, I know it's for pleasure for you guys, pleasure sometimes money, but for the dogs, it's injuries. 
and some of them don't get treated and they die of the injuries. He's going to sign a thing that he's not going to do it again if he's ever caught again with this thing or even his name be mentioned in an organized fight, then he can be picked up and arrested. This is a major breakthrough. A signed affidavit could lead to the other dogfighters, and it's evidence that could be presented to a court. At the moment, it's very cooperative, and hopefully we're going to get to the bottom of the matter as to what actually happened. He's admitted to being involved in the dogfighting, and he's going to write an affidavit stating everything that transpired and all the people that were involved. Moyo and Wayne want to make sure that all the culprits know that they have committed a crime and could face prosecution. They'll be back soon to continue their investigations. Meanwhile, the staffy that was involved in the fighting is at the SPCA. Her owner agreed that they can find her a new home, away from any risk of dog fighting. First, though, animal behavior expert Candice de Villiers has to make sure she won't be a danger to any new owners. We're going to be doing a behavioural assessment on this dog, just to assist us with finding her a suitable home. We have a series of tests and we're going to start with stroking her, just seeing what her interaction would be with the handler. Enjoying that, clearly, liking her tummy wrap. Next would be the teeth check see how she handles the uh, face handling, if a child can come up to her and, and uh, touch her in her face. Pulling a little bit, allowing it. Here's a tummy wrap. We're going to go over to doing a safe hug. Safe hug indicates just if a child had to come up to her, grab her around her neck and try and hug her or kiss her or anything like that. Um, we, we call it a safe hug if we put our hand over her head um, in case she wants to possibly bite the handler. She's 100% with that, enjoying that. We're going to go over to doing a food bowl. Special care has to be taken with any dog that has been encouraged by its misguided owners to fight. We're going to use a plastic hand to put the hand in the food bowl to see if she'll allow someone handling a food bowl, putting their hands in there. Okay, so she seems to be quite all right with um, being handled while her face is in the food bowl. I would describe her as being a very friendly dog. She obviously enjoys the human contact. Now, Staffies can make very, very good family pets. They're very human driven, very human affectionate. Obviously because of the breed, a lot of people will be interested in her, um, but we would just have to be specific as to who, who we allow her to get her. She's passed Candice's test. Now they'll try to find her the perfect new home. Senior Inspector James Murphy is heading back to the farm east of Cape Town. James has been in regular phone contact with the owner, and he's been assured that conditions have improved. Now he wants to see for himself. We're back at the farm with the cows who were stuck in the mud to come and do a follow-up and see what uh, changes they've made or whether they have made any. I uh, just need to locate the man in charge or the foreman here, and then we can uh, proceed with our inspection but there were certain issues that needed to be addressed. The foreman is there to meet James, but he has some shocking news. The owner has been killed. The gentleman is the acting foreman for the time being, but the actual owner has uh, uh, subsequently been uh, um, shot, and at this stage, uh, his sisters have assumed responsibility for the farm with the guidance of the community and the farmers and stuff and helping them. So we just hope things don't go down in terms of the welfare of the animals. Um, that's what the, you know, these guys have got water. My concern is that only two of the blocks have actually got water. I'm just wondering who's, you know, actually supposed to be caring for them. And I mean, that one is coughing. Outside, James is at first reassured that some progress has been made, but further afield, he can see that there are still serious problems. This is the cattle in the field here, and uh, it was very, very waterlogged at the one trough there where they were drinking water. The water was leaking out and it was just making the ground unbearably muddy. I actually got stuck in it last time and uh, ruined a pair of boots. Ah, my hat. What the hell's happening here? This is not good. Looks 
looks like somebody died here. Um, doesn't look like a big animal, but obviously there's an accepted mortality rate in terms of the dairy farming. One would have thought they would have either scooped up the body and taken it away, just dug a hole and buried it. We've got another dried up carcass over there. It looks pretty well decomposed. And we've got the muddy patch here, which is not as big as it was last time. It can stand there, but the water's definitely running all the way down here. What's wrong with you, girl? This cow can't get up. There's something wrong with that leg. <coughs> that knee is swollen. It's 5109. That's an issue that needs to be addressed. It's not a huge amount of improvement, but uh, yeah, it's a little worrying and I think we need to look into this and get hold of the current owners and sorry, find out what, they, what they're planning on doing. I mean, shame, I feel sorry for the family, yeah, but uh, the animals do need to be cared for properly and, and uh, you know, there's issues that need to be addressed, so I will be writing as a warning and uh, contacting the owner and hopefully we can sort this out. With so many animals and so many problems, this is a case that will take patience, hard work, and time to resolve. James will be making frequent visits here from now on. Regardless of the circumstances, the animal suffering has to stop. Senior Inspector James Murphy is heading back to Quills River to check on the dogs that were being kept in the back of a pickup truck or backy. Um, this is the Maltese poodles that were locked in the backy because the uh, uh, owner wouldn't allow them in onto the property because he was worried about his dog uh, getting infection from the other people's dogs and he would, he'd let them kind of live here for a bit uh, in the interim. The backy hasn't moved. What about the dogs? Hi, how are you doing? Are they in the backy or are they in the yard now? The friend the dog's owners are staying with has set aside an area in the yard for the dogs to live in. What, in the yard all day? Oh, okay, that's great. Yeah. And they've got a kennel there? Yes. Okay, yes. So and the dogs and everything. Too. Okay, now that's, that's great, man. That's really great. It's right, right. much better than being in the bucky. I think that was the, 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 the major concern here, is the dogs being in the bucky. No, because we're looking for a good home, and when you get one there, things will be a lot different. And things are coming right now, so from what great, I so, saw you. So, so you reckon you'll have... You're looking positive. Yeah, you won't see me along. Uh, no, it'll be a month or two, and I... Uh, Hopefully we'll be out here and have Good. a place of my own. Great, thanks very much. All right, James, thanks for anyway looking in there. It's a satisfactory conclusion for everyone, especially the dogs. The owners actually let them keep the dogs in the, in the garden now. That's a positive thing. At least the dogs aren't going to be in the car all day. And I mean, with temperatures uh, in, in our summers of 30, sometimes up to 40 degrees, um, especially in this area, the northern suburbs, it's, it's, yeah, a dog could be fried in no time, so it's really much better that the dog is, dogs are in the yard. Wait, the cat can come up. It's okay, it's okay, boy. Come two on. weeks ago, Inspector Wayne Hector rescued two dogs from a settling tank at the Athlone Sewage Works. Falling into the filthy water did this dog no lasting harm. Come, sir. But a new problem has emerged. The kennel staff have noticed he walks awkwardly. Come with him like you, you're making him run a bit. What we have done with this dog is we have taken x-rays uh, just to establish what exactly is happening with the, with the hip area because just from the way he walks, looking at his gait, you can tell that these, he, he wobbles and, uh, and sways his, his body around. The x-rays produced a surprise. The dog has previously had surgery for hip dysplasia. Previously, this femur, this bone, which is the femur, must have looked like that, and that is the head of the femur. And what they have done then is amputated it at the neck to try and alleviate the pain. Now, this is one of the problems we face here. Is this dog 
obviously had an owner and after about 14 days nobody has come through to take the dog so whether or not we'll be able to find a home is a do or die situation in the sense that this animal has a problem. Now this is our dilemma, how long do you keep a dog in a kennel before it finds a home? Uh, and yes, we will give this dog a chance and we will keep it in the kennels, keep it going. It will need anti-inflammatories, so we'll put it on anti-inflammatories just to ease the pain. So at some point we've got to make the hard decision. And indeed, in terms of behavior, when you keep an animal in the cage for too long, you can clearly see the change in behavior as well, because it's, very, it's a very stressful environment. The adoptions team desperately hopes someone will come forward who is prepared to take on a dog with these medical needs. They'll be working hard to find that special person. The young dog that was signed over to the SPCA by his homeless owner recovered from his injury and he didn't take long to get adopted. The Butler family decided Miggles was just the pet for them. We were very interested in, in having a family pet. We've been here about a year and a half now from Chicago and uh, we wanted a dog. Well, the kids and I went down to SPCA in Grassy Park and we looked at the different dogs there and we were very interested in just a calm and quiet, uh, good family pet. We weren't looking for a guard dog, but just a, a dog that we could love and enjoy. And we saw Miggles there and knew he was the one we wanted to adopt. Come on, Miggles. When we first saw him, he was actually way back in the cage and he was very uh, shy and very timid. And um, I, I don't know, my heart just went out towards this one. And uh, to be honest, he's been a perfect pet. He's very calm, he's obedient, he likes human contact. He, he snuggles with the boys. He has his spurts of energy so the boys can play with him, but uh, otherwise he's, he's really been a perfect pet for us. We all take turns playing with them outside. Yeah, we take him to the park take turns feeding him, doing the chores. His favorite activity is like most likely sleeping and then sleeping more. <gasps> yeah! Oh good, you ran! When we went to the SPCA to look for a dog, they had a description on uh, each cage telling us what the dog was like. And for Miggles, they um, described his personality as timid, uh, scared, very scared of cats and needing confidence. And they were right on, that's exactly how he is. He's, he's very timid, and, but he's, he's flowering with, with the love that he's getting. 